Reading with your kids. Hola, Niha, Kunik, Chiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Mahaba, Muni Muli Wanji, Namaste, Jambo. Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Chad Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast, an iHeartRadio Best Kids and Family Podcast Award nominee. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville, and we are so delighted that you are helping us help families grow closer through reading. Thank you so very, very much, and please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Amazon Music, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is Dr. Sonia Amin. She is here to celebrate her beautiful children's book, Facts and His Bubbles. Before we invite Dr. Sonia into the studio, we want to invite you to visit our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Go there, please, and sign up for our newsletter. We share some great, great tips for families, activities that you can do with your kids, recipes, games you can play, and so many great books. It's a great way to find out what's coming up on the show and also a great way to find out what you may have missed. You can find it all, and you can sign up for free at our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Joining us right now from the great state of Florida, she is here to celebrate her wonderful children's books, Bax and His Bubbles. Please welcome to the show, Dr. Sonia Amin. Dr. Sonia, how are you? I am doing awesome. Thank you so much. How are you doing? Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing well. It's a chilly day here in Boston, but anytime we're talking about children's books and cuddling up and and reading with our kids, it just gives me a warm feeling. Not warm enough to walk outside in the t-shirt, but it just gives me a warm feeling. I totally hear you. I t- we actually woke up this morning to a temperature of 37, which is not typical, but it, it's already warmed up to 60. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank goodness for you. I wouldn't want you guys to, to have to suffer through. Floridians, I'm sure, 37, uh, that must be uh, almost like an Armageddon. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> very much. <laughs> so tell us all about back. First off, uh, we want to thank... Uh, um, Dr. Sonia created a great read aloud video of Bax and his bubbles for our reading in the new year event, uh, which was so well received and, and folks loved uh, the video that you made. Tell us about this great story, please. All right. Well, Bax and his bubbles, all about a kid and his thoughts is um, a book that really helps kids to foster healthy thinking habits. Um, it's inspired by biblical scripture and it provides a method that, I believe is simple for children to conceptualize. So in the book, Bax's thoughts are depicted by the illustration of a bubble or a soap bubble. So in instance, it's what we often term um, thought bubbles, right? Mm -hmm. Well, in the story, Bax uh, not only takes time to think, but he also learns what thought bubbles to keep and which ones to release or let go. And so ultimately, the filter that he uses to decide this is by asking himself three questions. So the first is, is this thought true? Because so often we think thoughts that are not true, right? Whether they're untrue thoughts of ourselves or maybe they're thoughts that are not true of others. Uh, Then the second question he thinks is, is this thought kind? And because again, I always say everything we say or do starts with a thought. And if we have an unkind thought, then we're more likely to say unkind things. And if we have an unkind thought, we're more likely to do something that's unkind. And then finally, the the last question he asks is, is this thought excellent? And the excellent thoughts are the ones that Bax chooses to speak and act on. And um, in the book, I give a few examples of uh, what he does Um, So like just some real life examples that give kids the ability to see, okay, hey, if I have this excellent thought, then I can choose to speak up or I can choose to do something um, about whatever it is that's an excellent thought. Boy, oh boy, this is such an important skill 
to teach kids. I know adults who need to learn this skill, to be honest with you. Um, and it is, I, I, am, am I right? I mean, is skill the right word to use in describing this? Yes, I would say skill, um, even a tool, or you say like to have a tool in your toolbox. Uh, so just taking the time to think and then using these filters to help you decide, okay, these are the thoughts that I'm going to actually focus on versus these are the thoughts that, you know what, I'm going to let go of. Um, so in the book, I even say, you know, so it's all about being intentional with our thought patterns because it's normal to have negative thoughts at times, right? As humans, we're, we're going to have the full range of thoughts and emotions. Um, however, it's about noticing them, being aware of what's occupying our mind, and letting things that are not true, that are not kind, to be released, and then choosing to focus on the positive. So really, really important. How realistic, though, is it? I'm imagining that there's there's somebody out there listening, saying to themselves, I know adults who who can't take time to think and to kind of separate and, and ask themselves those questions. Life is coming at them so fast and they're just reacting to the moment and kids, boy, a three or four, five, six year old, their, their life can be even more disorganized. Is this something that's realistic to be able to teach to kids? Yes. So I think there, that is, the reality is that so often we don't take the time to think. We are, we can be just reactive in situations. Um, that's where just practicing it, um, even at home with, with any, um, skill or anything that it's really practice makes perfect. And so we, we do that even with my kids, just, okay, let's practice. When I call your name, <laughs> you're going to say, yes, mommy, I'm coming. So we practice it when they're in a good mood <laughs> and when, um, you know, stakes aren't high <laughs> so that when it comes to the time when I'm calling them and, you know, whether it's a, a safety issue, you know, they're playing, um, in the front yard, there's a car coming, whatever it is. Um, so that, in the in in life when it actually happens they've already practiced it and so with with thinking um when we for little children i say you know take time to think what does that look like it can mean taking a deep breath it can mean um counting to 10 it can mean taking just pausing um possibly going for a walk when they're having these you know anxious thoughts or whatever it is so yes i think you make a good point in actually practicing it um because it it's not something that comes naturally and like you said it's it's something that we even as adults can struggle with so yeah and i love that idea of helping kids to to take time to think it's a it's a concept that we've heard a few times here on the podcast. Uh, and, and most of the people who've shared this idea are doctors and psychologists and, and uh, therapists who say that, you know, it, it's this real important skill to teach kids is just taking time to think, to stop and not to be reactive, but to be intentional. And um, I, I love how uh, Bax is, is helping kids understand how important that is. Thank you. Yes. And, um, and then I also, in addition to one being intentional, and that, that's the key word, intentional with our thought patterns, and also um, for kids and adults, for us to, to realize, you know what, we have the power to choose what thoughts we're going to dwell on. So, even when we have those unkind thoughts or un, you know, those thoughts that are not true, we have the power to let go of those and then we have the power to choose to, you know, exchange those for positive thoughts. Yeah. Now, am I right in thinking that when we're talking about thoughts, we're, that's, we're talking about emotions as well? Yes, I think, um, Thoughts then lead to how we, you know, what our emotions are going to be. So I, I do think, you know, they're very much related. The root of a lot of the emotions that we are going to express 
are based on the thoughts that we are keeping in our mind. How can we help our kids? Now, I, I, I love this idea of, of, is this thought true? And boy, oh boy, that's something, that, that idea of discerning whether or not a thought is true or whether or not information that we're seeing online is true. It's something that's so important. How do we help our kids discern you know, if, if a thought is true or not, if they're sitting down and they're hearing, you know, if they're in a situation where some kids are being unkind to them and they're telling the, your, your child, oh, you're, you're no good, you, you can't play basketball, you look ugly, you're, you, you're uncoordinated, you can't dance. How can we help our kids understand that that's, uh, not true about them, that, that they are wonderful and blessed and beautiful just the way they are? Oh, that, that's a great question. So I uh, I give an example in the book where Bax actually is playing soccer. He misses the the goal and he thinks, oh, I'm not good at anything. And so at this point, he then thinks, he takes a moment to think, right? And then he decides, you know, that's really not true. I'm going to let this bubble go. I also include um, that, you know, as parents and teachers, the adults in their life uh, have play a huge role in um, helping them to discern true thoughts. And so the his mom in the book then, you know, help suggest him to think true thoughts. And so he ends up um, replacing the thought with other thoughts, which include, well, if I practice more, I can get better. And he also thinks, you know, I can do hard things. So not, uh, and then at the end, at the end of the book, I also include, um, some discussion questions. And one of those, just one of the discussion questions I include are, Hey, who are the trusted adults in your life that you can talk to about your thoughts? Because you know what? Our thoughts are not, it's not so easy sometimes to, um, discern whether uh, this thought is true or not. And so that's where, um, talking to those that their their trusted adults in their life are, really will help them in that, those situations. Yeah. So important, I think that that whole idea of of giving a, a child the foundation of love of, of of hearing from our parents from from the people that they think are the most important people in their lives. That they are loved. Uh, I think that's so very, very important. And, and when we give the, our kids that foundation, I think that's the first step in helping them be able to discern what is, what is a true thought and what is not true. Oh, yes, I completely agree. That, that is so important so that they don't have this um, negative self-talk. Mm-hmm. Um, those types of thoughts, I, I completely agree. Yeah, and and I think now more than than ever, I th- I think hopefully parents are are becoming aware of the fact that our kids are exposed to so many contrary messages out there in the media. Kids are exposed to thousands of messages in the media every single day. And while very, I, I don't know if they're ever exposed to a, a, a message in the media that is explicitly coming out and saying, hey kid, you're no good, you're worthless. They are come hearing messages every day saying, um, uh, you deserve this or you, you know, you should aspire to have this thing or that thing. And if you don't have this thing or that thing, then you're not as good as somebody who does. And, you know, and again, that foundation that we can build for our kids when they're young, understanding that they are beautiful and special and loved just for who they are, not for for what they have, is so important. It's going to make a huge difference in their lives as they grow and as they are exposed to these these messages. Oh, yes, I completely agree. Yes. Having them to have just a strong identity of who they are and um, really just knowing that you're right, as that they are wonderfully and beautifully made um, by God, really. And so uh, when they have that kind of foundation, then um, they're more likely to um, be able to discern um, their thoughts yeah, better. Yeah. 
I, I love that. I love that idea that you were beautifully made. Um, mm -hmm. So, so important. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what inspired you? You, you know, I introduced you as Dr. Sonia Amin, and, and you have your doctorate. You, you have a background in pharmacy and food science. What inspired you to become a children's author? Oh, well, so, yes, I do have my um, bachelor's in food science and human nutrition and then my doctorate in pharmacy. But then I, um, after having kids, I have just loved um, being able to read with them. I mean, since my kiddos were young, I mean, infants, I've always read to them and really loved seeing their faces light up with each book we read. I mean, whether it was a silly book or something that we used to facilitate learning a lesson, I mean, they loved it no matter what. And even now I have uh, a seven and a nine year old and it's the best part of my day to just snuggle up, cuddle up and read. And, um, it's just a precious time that we have together. And once I, you know, years ago when I first just experienced, wow, it's amazing what books, um, are able to do for our kids and even adults. Right. Um, but that is what inspired me to write, um, a children's book. And so, and that's what I want really for, for parents to use the book as, um, not just, you know, it's quality time to spend with your child. And I, my hope is that, um, the book would be a catalyst for discussion on healthy thinking. Um, and so like I had, I think I had mentioned that I do include a few discussion questions. I, there's some like pre-reading questions during reading and post reading, but even if those questions aren't used, right, like really just, um, reading the book and then having kids be able to feel like, you know what, we can be open about talking about thoughts and, um, and it, and it can be something that's used and talked about even while they're very young. Uh, I've had um, even preschoolers um, understand the basic concept, right? Like not all the details and maybe not um, the words positive and negative, but they can understand, you know, good thoughts and, mm -hmm. and you know, oh, okay, I'm going to keep this bubble and, you know, I want to let that bubble go. And so, and that's my, you know, that's really my desire that um, it would be, um, just like a starting point for parents and teachers to be able to just start that dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. We, we talk a lot, a lot here on the podcast about the fact that reading with our kids can be the beginning to the, the start of a lifelong conversation. And yes. just imagine how much easier it's going to be talking to your 15 and 16 year old about making healthy choices regarding um, drugs or tobacco to, to help our kids make healthy choices around driving. When we start that conversation, when they're three and four years old, uh, uh, about you, which thoughts to keep and which thoughts to let go of that, that, that te conversation with our teenagers is going to be so much easier, uh, when we begin it when they're three and four years old. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And I love the fact that you talked about, you still snuggle up with your seven and your nine year old. I imagine there might be some people out there saying seven and nine year old that the kids in fourth grade, the kid can read on, on their own. Why do I have to still read with my kids when they're seven and nine years old? Oh, that is, you know, I, I have to say, so I think no matter what age your child is, I, I find that children love to be read to. I mean, uh, I've heard parents that tell me, even even their teenagers, that, that they enjoy being read to. Yes, they can totally read the book on their own, but um, there is something to say about just that um, quality time spent and being read to. Um, yes, I definitely, it is something special and really so precious. Yeah, it it is, and I knew this in in not instinctually, but I I I just loved reading with my kids, so I kept doing it. <laughs> you know, it's just yeah. I don't want to let go of this. And, I hear you. <laughs> and and the, you know, so I learned experientially that it was valuable because I I know my kids got a lot out of it, and especially 
uh, about those conversations that we continue to have as they got older and we were reading stories. Um, but there's also a lot of science backing this idea up. There, there have been yeah. studies that show that reading aloud with our high school kids, reading aloud in a classroom to high school kids is really, really powerful and really, really helpful to kids. Yes, I agree. And I, I totally feel you on uh, just the, it, for me, it fills my heart. I have to say, it's probably my favorite thing to do with them. I know there's other stuff that we do, like, you know, we'll play video games and we'll, you know, do other things together. But yes, definitely reading with them uh, is my favorite thing to do. But yes, the value that goes both ways is something to, to be said. Yeah. And I really encourage families to Take that experience, you know, take what you're doing when you're reading with your kids. And it's so much more than just reading the words on the page. It's doing what, what, what you suggest with backs in his bubbles, having discussions, asking questions, listening to your child and, and, and take that into the other areas of your life. So when you're sitting down and watching a TV show together or watching a movie, now we have that pause button. We can stop and we can talk about what's going on in the screen. And, and, and we're not just sitting there like zombies, uh, you know, just yes. eating these images and, and sounds that are coming off the device at us. We're actually using those images and sounds and those stories as a catalyst to have conversations with our kids. Yes, yes, definitely. Actually applying what we're reading and learning. So yes, and applying them to real life situations. Yeah. That's such a great point. So you're obviously a, a busy woman with a doctorate in pharmacy and two kids that are going to be teenagers in a blink of an eye. And boy, <laughs> your world's going to change when that happens. Um, is there another book coming, another children's book coming from Dr. Sonia Amin? So right now I am in just the process of kind of marketing this current book I don't have current plans on like a sequel for Bax specifically but I'm actually just praying about what my next steps are I've all, always wanted to even write for women and um, I, I'm interested in kind of uh, different things so I my next book could possibly be a children's book but uh, I'm also considering other other types of writing as well Awesome. Well, I know folks listening are going to want to know where they can go online so they can learn more about you and to find out what it is that you're going to turn your skills and thoughts on to next. So where can folks connect with you online? Okay, so um, my book is available on Amazon. It's available in hardcover, paperback, and Kindle. And um, if you have Kindle Unlimited, it's also included in that. And then you can also find my book on barnesandnoble.com. And I do just want to mention that I do have some free educational resources that can be used in companion to the book. And those are available on my website, which is www.soniaeamin.com. So that includes my middle initial in there, E. And I'm also on Instagram at Sonia E. Amin. Awesome. And I'm imagining that if someone was looking to support a, a local independent bookstore and they called the bookstore up and said, hey, uh, I heard about this great book called Backs and His Bubbles by Sonia Amin. Can you order it for me? I'm, I'm sure the indie bookstore would be able to do that, right? Yes, it is available through wholesale distributors. So, yes, they would be able to do that as well. Awesome. We've had a great time speaking about a lot of things. Ultimately, we, we've been we've been speaking about love and loving our kids uh, by talking about the book Facts in His Bubbles, written by our guest, Dr. Sonia Amin. Hey, Sonia, thanks so much for being part of our show. Oh, thank you so much, Dudley. It's been a pleasure. I appreciate your time. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. If you want to giggle, you don't want to miss this episode. Dan Allen will be here to celebrate Pizza Boy and the Super Squad. It's a really, really fun middle grade novel. Dan is a really, really fun guy. That's the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. If you are the author of a great children's book, you may be frustrated at how difficult it is to get people to notice your book. I, I bet you're, you're at home sitting down thinking to yourself, 
wow, if only we could do school visits so I could get in and tell kids about my book. If only I could do library visits, but those things aren't possible during the, the pandemic. If only there are more book signings. I, I have to tell you, it's really difficult no matter what is going on because every month there are thousands of of books that are published. That's right, thousands of books published every single month. One thing that we can do to help you is to let you know about our Certified Great Read program. If our panel of educators, parents, and kids believe that your book is worthy of four or five out of five stars, it becomes a Certified Great Read. And with that status comes a number of really powerful tools that can help your book stand out from the crowd of books, from the thousands of books that are published every single month. To find out more, just go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com, click on the Authors Click Here button at the top of the page, scroll on down to where it says Certified Great Reads. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, I want to start by thanking Dr. Sonia Amin. Please be sure to check out Bax and His Bubbles. I also want to thank my team, Alejandro Doherty, Fatima Khan. I want to thank our two amazing interns this semester, Hannah Pat Oboiski, Alexia Brown. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. But most of all, we want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast.